Hello friends! Today's video is kindly sponsored by Gen Crafts. They are an art supply brand that carries a range of products at a really affordable prices such as watercolors, brush pens, and acrylics. If you're interested, they were so kind to provide a 15% off link for you guys that I'll have listed in the description down below. So today I'll be reviewing their new 50 piece watercolor tubes and their watercolor paper. The paints come neatly stacked in this cardboard box and come with 50 12 milliliter tubes of watercolors. The box and tubes do not contain any information about the pigments or light fastness of the paints that you would typically find on professional artist grade paints. So bearing this in mind and given their retail price, I knew that these paints were going to be more of a student grade quality. As for the pad, they come in a two pack and each contains 30 sheets of 140 pound watercolor paper that has a lightly textured surface which might be hard to see on camera there. Something to note when first receiving these paints is that the opening is sealed so a hole must be punctured with the opposite end of the lid. I believe this is so that they stay as fresh as possible right up until the paints arrive to you. As always, when I receive a new set of paints, I like to swatch all the colors so that I can get a feel for the paints, the color selection, and in this case, the paper as well. I had also drawn a black line with a waterproof fine liner so that we could see how transparent or opaque each color was. With all my watercolor swatches, I lay down a clean wet stroke on the paper and then proceed to load up my brush with paint, covering about half of the swatch and then with a clean brush again, I complete the swatch with the remaining paint on the paper to achieve a gradient. This allows me to see each color at full strength as well as a diluted version of it. The color selection in this set contains a little bit of everything considering it is 50 pieces, but I will say that it is largely dominated by reds, pinks, and blues. I was surprised that there was a fairly small selection of greens and earth tones in comparison. Conveniently though, for me, pinks and blues are typically the types of color palettes I lean towards anyways, so in that sense, this variety of colors definitely suited my fancy. Then, after having swatched all the colors, I found that the paper held up just as well as other watercolor papers do in the past. And for the colors themselves, I would say that they definitely lean on the pastel side and many of the colors had a semi-opacity to them. Now onto the fun part, painting some portraits. If you've seen my videos before, you probably won't be surprised that I'm starting with the skin first. Something that is convenient about a pack of 50 colors is that there are so many colors that are pre-mixed for you and thus can be used straight out of the tube. For this portrait, I started off using a diluted version of golden brown. After that first layer had dried, I then added some warmth to her skin by using a diluted red coral for her nose, cheeks, chin, and around her eyes. I was able to use my typical method of blending uh, with putting the color down, then using a clean wet brush to kind of soften the edges. However, the paint dries much faster than what I'm used to, so I had to work fairly quickly in this case. For the hair, I thought I'd take advantage of all the different blues in this set, so I used the light blue, dolphin blue, and royal blue to achieve the gradient in her hair. Then I went ahead and used the royal blue for her features, which I thought made for an interesting contrast against her skin, and I had used the ultramarine for her shirt. Like I had mentioned earlier, these paints dried fairly quickly, which does have its pros and cons. The con being that it's more difficult to achieve a smooth wash of paint, and the pros being that it didn't I didn't have to wait as long to put a new layer on top, making the painting process a little quicker. And if you're impatient like me, this feature can definitely be an advantage. Another thing that I'd like to mention about these portraits is that 
After having swatched the colors and gotten a feel for them, I did approach the pinning process a little more thoughtfully. And what I mean by that is I didn't use nearly as many layers or as much water as I normally would when I paint with watercolors, mainly because of the pastel nature of these paints as well as the watercolor paper didn't feel quite as dense as what I'm typically used to. After putting down a few more layers, I moved on to putting in the line art to define her features. I also had used a diluted blue to add in some shadows to give her face a little bit more dimension. I also had used midnight blue for her eyes, brows, and hair, and for her nose and face, I believe I used a mixture of golden brown and coral red. Then for the background, I just did some flat washes of yellow orange for the moon and stars and then varying dilutions of the color purple for the clouds and background. Admittedly though, even though the tube says purple, for me, I think it reads a bit more of an ag a magenta, but that's why it's always handy to have a swatch card ready so that you know what color to expect because sometimes the tubes are not perfectly accurate. Then for my second sketch, I decided to go for a warmer color palette so that I could have the opportunity to use as many colors from this GenCraft set as possible. For the base of her skin, I diluted the color brown and for her hair, I used the color dark brown. And considering that the first sketch had kind of a moon theme, I decided for this one, I wanted to have a more summery, sunny feel. And I must say, I really enjoy these sunglasses. So if someone knows where I can get a pair, let me know. <laughs> then for the lips and adding the warmth to her skin, I used the color Rust, which is a very pretty kind of muted orange color that I thought paired really well with all the yellow orange. I also went ahead and used the same Rust color for her shirt as well to kind of bring it all together. For her hair, I wanted to put more emphasis on how curly and thick it was, so instead of another flat wash, I opted for lots of curved brush strokes to give it some texture and volume. Then from there, I'm pretty much just adding more layers to give some dimension to certain areas and some more saturation by adding more layers. And thankfully, the paper held up really well. I hadn't had any issues with it pilling or really buckling much with uh, the layers of paint that I was using. As for these GenCraft paints, something to note about using these large variety packs is because there's so many premixed colors, I actually recommend using the color straight out of the tube. Um, because if you end up mixing too many of the colors together, it actually ends up becoming more uh, dull and you want to keep that saturation as much as possible so it's better to just sort of layer them on top of each other as opposed to mixing them uh, to create the colors that you're looking for. So if you're an aspiring artist that really wants to learn color theory and how to mix your paints then a 50 set of colors would not be the right choice for you. 
However, if you're a pretty casual or hobby painter, then big sets like these GenCrafts paints can definitely be more convenient and quick to use since you don't have to worry about mixing your own colors. Plus, the set is quite economical, so if you don't feel like you need to invest lots of money for high-end paints, then these paints actually might be suited for you. And as always, I want to be as honest with you guys as possible. And for me personally, I would not use this set of paints for finished illustrations. They definitely would be reserved for more casual sketches and experimenting. And speaking of experimenting, out of curiosity, I actually laid down a little bit of colored pencil on some of her features, which created a nice pop of extra saturation and a light texture. And then as a final touch, I used my trusty white paint marker to add some highlights to her eyes and the sunglasses. And then to finish, I removed the washi tape, which initially was pulling up the paper, but after running a hot hair dryer on the tape, I was able to remove it from the paper without any issues. Lastly, thank you again to Genuine Crafts for sponsoring this video. I think the major takeaway from this video is that you really don't need super expensive supplies to make art. And I hope that seeing this process motivates you guys to keep creating no matter what supplies you have and whatever skill level you're at. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye.